I mean, uh, so thinking, a long time. Thinking of you know something like you, a number like Music in the Mirror, you really have such a strong belt, but in a way that wasn't broad, like Ethel Merman or any of those women. It was really very individual. And did you did you ever think about the sound of your voice as a way to get cast or something that you weren't sure if you'd be able to well, get I loved, cast? Or? I loved uh, training classically. I mean, I loved the soprano voice, mm -hmm. um, but but uh, but I, I realized it's like ballet. The ballet training is a basis. Uh, it's good for your body, but it's also a basis to learn any other kind of dance. Uh, I think. Absolutely. So I really wanted to learn voice production. I didn't want to learn style as much as because I really uh, I think that in theater the um, it's all acting based. So the actor. You know, you, you get the everything from the text to the character, and then how does the character sound, right? You're always going to have the core of you, because we're all so individual in our sound, and, and we want to find our sound. I think what I love about your question is that through freedom, you know, through relaxation, and through real focus and intention, and those things will apply, you know. So it took me a long time to find that freedom. It's actually Liz Kaplan, who is um, a vocal consultant on so many different shows and, and works with everyone. That's like a basis of her practice is teaching everyone how to relax because so many people are producing sound through stress, especially, I mean, of course, it's stressful to audition, right? But it's what happens when you let that go. What's the sound do you hear then? Yeah. And yeah, it sounds like you found it. I felt <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> I, I want to talk a little bit, you mentioned all of these people that you have had the uh, pleasure to work with, whether it's choreographers like Fosse and Michael Bennett, or uh, directors like George Abbott and Hal Prince. I'm wondering about some of the lessons that you learned from those individuals that either carried you on to the next thing that you would, you know, when you did promises, promises, you were like, aha, but I learned and how to succeed that this, or lessons that you carry through to today. Well, you learn how to be a professional. You learn that everybody has their job to do. And you do learn so many artistic things from, from uh, and you learn from mistakes, from your own mistakes, but you also learn from seeing other people make mistakes. I think that's a classic uh, example, the story about Promises, promises. Now it's like every year I can count on Turkey Lurkey coming up for YouTube, right? But um, in the beginning, that was not a big hit. There's so many stories. There's so many stories like this about great Broadway shows, about on their way to that place of success. Mm -hmm. um, but so through, you know, miscalculating. Michael Bennett, who was a great, uh, was so, it, it was so important for him. This was his first big hit as a choreographer. And it was so important for him to be, have always the, the, the touch of reality. Do you know what I mean? To be grounded in reality with these, uh, through dance and the the story. So he was being too realistic and it just laid a big dent um, out, out of town, which is where we always solve those problems. Right, and uh, so they, Bob Avian and, and Michael Bennett, that night in Boston, went to, the, you know those those hotel rooms where you have a, a mirror? At the, yeah, the, the, the tall mirror on the back of the door. Yeah. They were standing there doing, it's turkey lurkey. They did the whole number, put a whole dance together, and the next day they came in and um, and did a whole uh, uh, other number. And it was, it was just fantastic. So you have to let people make their mistakes sometimes, I think. From having done so many original musicals, is there a uniform process that they kind of follow step by step and it's the content that changes or is really every musical its own animal? I think so, I think so. It's, you, 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 if you've worked with people before, and that's why people like to work with people that they've worked with before sometimes if it works because they know what they're walking into and what, what they need for certain things or certain elements they need. But it's always like, I remember talking to the producers of, of Guys and Dolls and How to Succeed. They said, you can have all the same people, the creative staff, 
um, on a different story, and it may not work out. Right, know? right. It's all the alchemy. So the every every show is is unique. We obviously your work on a chorus line is iconic, but I, before we get there, I want to talk about company because I was watching the clips of um, original cast album Company and uh, Drive a Person Crazy and listening listening to Steven Sondheim say, well, Donna knows, Donna knows, and, and she can do this. Well, it was flat. And it, no, I mean, he was, he, it was a very like, don't worry about her, she knows she's got this, and I just want to know about creating that character of Kathy in a concept musical, which wasn't, like now we have a genre that we call it a concept musical. How do you find a character like that when it's just vignettes? Who was your Kathy? Well, you you have a backstory that it's your job as a as an actor, I think, to go in and, and, and have that's your work that you bring to rehearsal every day. And that was not easy. Uh, and I was still learning, you know, about how to put these parts together. The dance was the most difficult because it was like a painting. To him. It was a Which, by the way, so many people have seen more modern day companies. There was a dance that Kathy does called TikTok. That is, if you haven't seen the YouTube video, go find the YouTube video of this woman dancing. It's unbelievable. Well, and thank you for that. But, but that that video isn't even the, the real. Right. It's not the real. Right. It's not because it was seven minutes. But it it was uh, you know anyway. It was just an incredible thing and. I think for the, from the first reading, we all knew what a special piece it was because Stephen Sondheim had done the whole score already. It was all a fate of complete. It was just there. And as we read it, uh, it was just a, an, amazing, an amazing cast. And um, I, I, it was a struggle out of town. A couple things, a couple bumps in the road, but, but honestly, Hal Prince, uh, who I admire, I've always admired, and I will continue to admire him. Um, we've just lost him, and he just had, the, the, he was such a great gentleman of the theater, and a great producer, and he knew what to do. Um, uh, and he, they would take numbers out, put numbers in, so you can imagine how stressful it is. Right, when you're building something that you, you don't know, what, it's not, it's not like a puzzle where you have the top of the box that you can look at. You're building something that has no, like, and, you know, the people in charge, and Hal Prince and Stephen Sondheim, were, they were going to cater to everyone's idea or whim or what they, they were trying to really say something, do something <clears throat> quite wonderful and uh, do it their way. Are you excited to see the boys do Drive a Person yes. I mean, how wild. Amazing to see the show. But speaking of, so we have Turkey Lurk in town, we have TikTok, we have, of course, Music in the Mirror, which we're going to get to, I promise. Um, I, watching all of those videos, watching you dance Hello Baloo, I mean, there's a liveness, there's a vivacity, there, sometimes it looks like there's extra space in your joints. Was that, was that just always how you moved, or was that what yeah. was brought out of you? I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I'm listening to you, and I go, "Wow, that sounds really good." <laughs> no. uh, I don't know. I, I just loved. I love to dance. I love to. Was that always a collaboration with choreographers, like playing to your strengths and playing to the way you felt well, naturally? I mean, uh, David Winters was, you know, one of uh, the our, our icons, you know, in West Side Story, and he would choreograph it, um, and. We just, we were all eager to do that work. It was television, it was different and new, and uh, and it was like one step closer to Jerome Robbins, who everyone adored. Right, right, the gold standard. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just a lot of fun. Listen, all those groups that came on, you know, if you see any of those shows, it's just great. Do you met, did dancing on television, was that ever different from dancing on a stage, or was it all just dancing? Well, it was an amazing space. <clears throat> it's the studio where they have, at NBC, where they have The Tonight Show now. And we had Peter Matz, I don't know if any of you know or remember, um, great uh, arranger, conductor, Peter Matz, 
did all the arrangements with the NBC Orchestra, which was incredible. So we had all this live music we were dancing to, and it was mm -hmm. very exciting. Well, all of these things that we're talking about are such a collaboration to create a singular moment and a singular sensation, if you will, with a chorus line. So I want to talk about that, but I thought it might be fun um, if we had someone else join us on the stage. Yes, okay. What do you think? This is a surprise guest. Yes. Hi! Well, let me just say just a couple words. She was, you might guess it right, right away, but she was Michael Bennett's assistant for so many wow. years. She was, she's a dancer, a choreographer, a director, a producer, and what else can I say? She's a new award recipient. Yes, she's a fantastic woman, and uh, I'm really excited that she was able to come tonight to tell us more about a chorus line. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Miss Bjork Lee. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 